Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to the next episode uh, in this series where we're actually going to uh, start our project here a little bit. So in the last episode we um, kind of talked a little bit about where or the foundation of this project and where we want it to um, I guess go and what we're going to showcase. So if you missed that go ahead and just jump into the, uh, the season intro there and get caught up to speed. Um, and after a little bit of uh, communication and, and uh, I guess planning with uh, my roommate and girlfriend, we have uh, come up with a pretty basic application uh, that's going to showcase a, a handful of different things, you know, with the primary or I guess a large focus on this navigational architecture, um, and hopefully something that's a little bit interesting. So. In the previous episode, or a previous season, we went over and built this small little EPL application or dealt with the different teams that are a part of the English, English Premier League, a very popular soccer league in the world. And so I kind of want to make projects that at least uh, are either relatable or, I don't know, like maybe tangible or something that's a little bit, um, you know, realistic instead of just having some, you know, random uh, project that just tries to showcase some things. So we're actually going to create a small travel based application here um, and it's going to be centered primarily around uh, at least in the beginning around Croatia and some different uh, you know maybe natural attractions uh, either national parks or big cities or you know just a little bit of fun facts about the place um, because on a, as a side note my girlfriend and her entire family uh, come from a very small Croatian island a few years ago before the pandemic I actually had the privilege of going to that island with her on vacation and we toured around a few different um, things that will exist in this application and then you know had a couple other um, you know locations within the country that we kind of wanted to go visit or things that we didn't get to so uh, it's it's I guess going to be fun for me and hopefully it'll be interesting to you no matter where you are or what your interests are uh, in a completely non-biased approach, the country itself is um, quite beautiful, and the time that I spent there, or that we spent there, was um, just just fantastic. So, uh, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and create a new project here. Uh, we'll go ahead and create an empty activity project, uh, and we're going to name this uh, Senya, um, which, if you know me on a personal level, that actually has a little bit of meaning. Um, but for the um, instance of this application, it's kind of like we're going to send you to Croatia kind of thing, a little play on words here. Um, so we're going to use our language Kotlin. We're going to have, yeah, we'll keep the API level pretty high, to be honest, because of, this isn't necessarily a consumer facing application that we need to support um, uh, super far back for. So Android 8 is fine for me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click finish and let Android Studio do its thing here and we are going to uh, give it a moment. So one thing that I want to cover in this project, uh, or at least in this um, episode, sorry, is a description of the, uh, the data behind how this application is going to look. So it's not actually going to uh, unfortunately, I don't have a, a, a finished product for you yet that I would like to show, but I do have, and we came up with the data the other night to, um, uh, that's going to kind of fuel the screen here, if you will. So actually, we're going to create a raw directory, and then we're going to create the croatia.json file, which was over here. Okay. So this is quite um, quite a lot, not, not quite a lot, but this is maybe a little bit difficult to look at here. Uh, but what I want to call out here is that in the previous season, we actually created the data ourselves and um, you know, kind of hard-coded it into the application just so that we had things running uh, on the screen and, and it was just easy to you know, um, showcase the, the stuff I wanted to showcase. But in this, in this application, we're going to actually go ahead and take it a little bit further here, and we're going to use a JSON file. I believe that stands for JavaScript Object Notation. Um, 
and it's it's basically a just a way to encapsulate information, a way to describe information in a structured format and that is used all across the world to communicate, especially when we start talking about networking. Um, and then, you know, it's, it's easy for both clients and backend uh, systems to kind of parse it out, in our case, bring it into an object-oriented programming language and then, you know, operate on it and whatnot. So the idea here is if we were to build a screen that's able to handle an array of attractions or build an app that's able to handle the array of attractions with this data on each attraction, um, you know, if this, if any of this information changes, our, the structure to our code does not have to change, right? So that, that kind of extracts away uh, or gives you a way to modify the UI or modify something on the screen without actually having to touch the code. You can modify basically the data that's underlying and fueling the screen um, to, you know, you can modify that and then your, your app will handle it and react accordingly. So I'm just going to take a brief look at the structure of these, um, of, of this payload here to kind of give you a sense of where we're going to go, what information is going to be relevant, and then maybe we'll eventually, you know, add some more stuff to this uh, object to kind of continue to elevate the screen and stuff. So um, we have here an entire JSON object uh, that's with this little open bracket, and then within it we have an array of attractions. And arrays are denoted with this square bracket as opposed to the squiggly bracket, and then each object is declared with the uh, the squiggly brackets here. So I'm just going to go ahead and close all these other ones so that we can just take a look at the one at hand here. Um, so we have uh, an ID field. It's pretty standard practice that every element in the list uh, has a unique identifier to it. And so, uh, you know, eventually we can maybe even dive into like deep linking into a specific uh, attraction or something along those lines. So uh, definitely a good thing to have. So we've just generated with the uuidgenerator.net. Um, you can just refresh this page and it'll just give you a new unique ID. And I believe it's like one in, I don't even know, like basically these two, this, this key will never match another key. Uh, if it does go buy some lottery tickets because like the chance of it happening are so slim that it's just for all intents and purposes, not possible. Um, so we have an ID field here. We have a title of our attraction. We have an image URL. If you missed it in the last in season two, I believe uh, we introduced Picasso, the image loading library. So we're going to go ahead and use that as well to load images dynamically. We have a description field here. Then we have an actual object within uh, this object named location, and it has latitude and longitude coordinates. So maybe we can start to you know incorporate Google Maps or at least you know navigate the user out of the application into uh, a, a maps application to find out exactly where it is. Uh, some little months to visit, basically a little metadata that's going to fill the screen somewhere. And then an array of facts. Um, as you can see here again, it's an object uh, facts that is an array here because of square brackets and then this little curly bracket here closes this off. So um, we are going to take this uh, model and, and it's duplicated here, you know, I don't know, six, seven times with different attractions and different images and different information. So uh, we can actually go ahead and create or translate this not so friendly looking file into, uh, you know, a, a list of attraction objects that we as, you know, object oriented programmers can use to our advantage. Um, so a little bit of introduction of the data here, um, and then I think kind of what I want to start with here is getting things set up here with the navigation. Um, so I'll link this uh, in the description of the video, but you can see here that uh, there's uh, some imports basically that we need to provide so that uh, we can utilize this nav host fragment or, or the container fragment and whatnot. So we're going to go ahead and do that, kind of update our dependencies a little bit. So we'll up, open the build.gradle in the app module. 
we're going to go ahead and scroll down to the dependencies section and after a little bit of um, you know the the stuff that's already there we're going to go ahead and just copy this uh, stuff into our project so we'll do uh, navigation components mm -hmm. And then I think that's about it. We're not going to get into testing or uh, anything else here. So, um, or compose actually, that'll be for a much later season, but uh, that should be about it. So we're going to go ahead and, and sync this up. Also, uh, do not worry. Do not think that you need to come up with all this information on your own. I am going to connect this project to a Git repository. And why don't we just do that right now? So we're going to go ahead and create a new repository. Basically name it, you know, what we named the project, description. Um, we'll go with a simple travel app to Croatia. You make this bad boy public, uh, and then we're going to create this repository. In the empty repository, you're given this information here on how to basically, you know, set up uh, uh, certain things. So in our project or back in Android Studio, we will go into our terminal tab. We will say git init. And so that will go ahead and uh, create the git repository locally. Then git add star, uh, period here, sorry. So that'll change all of these red files to green. And now if we take a look at our project, which doesn't have a lot, but like, you know, for instance, all of this information here uh, has now been added to Git. It's now being tracked. Yeah, there's really not a lot here. Uh, yeah, there you go. You can see all that other stuff. Um, so let's say git commit minus uh, m first commit added dependencies and uh, JSON file and then we hit enter so we've gone ahead and uh, committed all of these files with um, that particular message again we could have done that with the command K uh, shortcut or doing this but we're doing a little bit of the stuff in the um, in the command line here so then we're just going to copy this one and that's adding this repository this remote repository as our origin so that's all good and then we'll just do this as well to push everything up uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I need to authenticate let's try it this way instead command shift K I'm gonna go ahead and push Okay, I guess because command line I didn't have it set up. No, it's kind of funky. I'm not entirely sure why that was the case. But then if we reload, um, we can see here that we have all the information we need. And if we take a look at our res raw directory, we have our Croatia.json file here. So um, do not worry. You don't need to actually create this uh, structure. You can actually just pull this project down now. I will also link the uh, the URL to this uh, repository in probably the season description, uh, if not the the channel or the episode description. So um, definitely be on the lookout for that if you're interested in it. But uh, we've gone ahead and added our JSON file in. We've added our dependencies here for the uh, navigation component and video's getting up there a little bit, so I'm just gonna cut it here and we will pick up where we are gonna add in um, the UI element that we need to complete this and kind of continue on learning about the nav graph, learning about um, how things are connected to one another and whatnot. So uh, thanks for sticking with me. I hope to see you in the next one.